And straight away, guys, I feel minutes. like this is such a good matchup for Iga um, to play it. Someone who hits the ball big but isn't necessarily the best mover from side to side is the sort of game plan that she loves to commit to. Third kilo. Shante had a tough one in the previous round against Danielle Collins. It was touch and go there for a while, whether she'd get over the line. Yeah, she said she already saw herself on the airplane back to Poland. And it was very, very close, but what champion's mind to turn that match around. And that forehand, a bit of a concern. We know Iga plays the best when she moves around to take that forehand from the center against Danielle Collins, who, granted, was playing very, very fast. She was moving around to play backhands from the center of the court. Ball. But I do think that for her game, it's so important that she continues 40, to use that forehand from the center of the court. It's impossible to see. It's so heavy. She opens up the court beautifully. And even if she's not feeling it maybe 100%, I think it just helps her game so much. Be happy Going with the start here, Shiontek. 190. First game. An improved service motion over the off-season from Shiontek, getting a little more pop, a little more pace. Hi, Andrea, I totally agree with you. I feel like sometimes Iga loses confidence on the forehand after only a couple of unforced errors and maybe doesn't realize how solid her regular rally ball is, even if she's not going 100% on it. It's such a heavy shot and it gets so much depth uh, without her really needing to commit fully to it. So, yeah, I would absolutely like to see her play more inside in at times as well. It's scary to think that Iga Shiontek, who has been the dominating player of the past two seasons, has still room to improve. the Noskova to Law 15. 15.
could believe this is Linda Noskova's first Australian Open. Just given her level, her ability. Just still a teenager. Let pursue. That's great stuff. Game Noskova. Confidence building opening game here from the teenager Linda Noskova. And you can One see that the tactics really trying to go back in behind and not mm -hmm. allowing Svantec to get set to get that first good stroke in in the rally. Has to mix it up tonight to be any chance. And we see her standing here right on the baseline. She's one of the players that is actually above the average of the WTA Tour in taking balls on the rise and taking balls inside the baseline. And that is a factor, of course, that can rush any player taking time away from your opponents whenever you can. That's what, of course, Frontec does so well herself. Mm. Just holds that baseline and can really make you feel uncomfortable as a player when time is taken away. Fifteen on. Andrea, I'm sure you'll back me up on this as you always do. But um, yeah, if you're in the locker room and you see the players who Iga tends to struggle against, it's the Danielle Collins, it's the Ostapenkos, it's people who give you zero rhythm and just go all out pace down at her feet and then open up the line. Showing off that great backhand Indeed. wing, and yes, Laura, I am backing you up 100% in this assessment. Very sound from you. Um, but all jokes aside, yes, 100% the players. And another thing comes to mind, that backhand, right? She struggles against players who have a huge backhand. Rybakina, Ostapenko, Collins in the previous round, because they can take it up the line, and she doesn't like to be rushed on the forehand side. It's the extreme grip, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's why she's got a very extreme grip, and that ball comes in hard and fast to get underneath it, get that racket face back vertical upon impact. It's not that easy to do.
Yeah, that's a smart serve, the body serve. Especially against players who have big swings, who like to set up to fully swing through the shots. If you jam them, they need space around their body to be able to pull that off. Advantage, Shrianti. Game. Bit of a struggle, but the world number one holds. Fights off a few break points. 2-1. First Shriantek set. Leads, two games to one. And there was a very nice example of what Laura spoke earlier, that exposing the movement of Noskova here. Iga Shriantek with that back angled backhand that opens up the court. If you can get her on the run, it's harder for these big hitters to set up and take a big swing. Nicely done there. And interesting, Josh. Iga is one of the remaining players in the tournament. She has been the second longest on court. I don't think that's ever happened for her. No, normally races through matches and look, of course, physically very fit. And I don't think physicality will come into it. No, I just think that uh, she's obviously had the toughest, definitely one of the toughest, maybe the toughest draw, had to beat former champion Sofia Kennan in the first round and then former finalist Danielle Collins. But I think for her, it's a change up. Does that give her confidence moving forward? I think it should. I think it should. I think it's sometimes hard to be in a position like Sabalenka is now when you're cruising yeah. through the tournament and all of a sudden you have a bit of resistance yeah. and you're not used to it anymore because uh. you're so used to cruising. So I like that for Iga actually. <laughs> Time. Yeah, if I had to take a gander at what that conversation with the German player was about, it did seem like it was the people coming in at the end of the game. She's not quite comfortable with it. Also, you learn something new every day. Dan Cahill's down here next to me, and he mentioned that the top seed usually gets one particular box, and Iga has swapped that, and she's gone rogue and gone for the other coach's box tonight. Yeah, that's the perfect Iga Shriantek point for me when she goes around, takes the forehand from the center of the court. And a 
again, it's a force to be reckoned with this forehand. When she has time, once the ball gets above hip height towards shoulder height, she is ruthless on the forehand. Fifteen thirty. Thirty. So important for, for Linda Noskova to get that first serve in so she can play first strike tennis. It's really hard to read. Oh. Let second serve. Oh. Yes. Yeah, it's just the pressure mounting that second serve return of Igas, one of the best returners on the tour, especially when it comes to the second serves. That's good pace, 180 kilometers an hour. It's a, it's a rather flat serve. It doesn't have a ton of shape to it. Good couple of serves to close out that service game. Two games all looking very comfortable, Linda. It's been a great start here. Absolutely. I think she looks very calm, very collected. Does not seem to overplay. That's sometimes the question, right? But she has three top 10 wins already, so she knows how to play these top players. But sometimes when you have young players coming against the best in the world, they overplay it. They want to do something extra. They think their game is enough. None of this from Linda Noskova tonight. Fifteen. You stand up on the baseline to try and take that return early. If you do not get it right, you'll see here, just gets caught a little, drops it short, and you, you're gone. You're all, you've really got to be committed. Either go up and go forward or stand a little deeper and go for length. From down here, I feel like she should go back uh, because especially the second serve where Iga's trying to go for a little bit more kick is bouncing up quite high, so just playing it above shoulder height and it, it's not necessary. She hits a big enough ball that she could go another metre further back and still get a, a really good strike. Oh, there it is. 
the back end down the line. Yeah, but Laura is absolutely right, especially because Iga has been using that body serve so effectively. You just give yourself a bit more time to react at that, to get out of the way if you take a step back. Hasn't used the backhand down the line. She's sort of, I feel like she's almost keeping that up her sleeve for a very good point. <laughs> You see the difference in what she's able to do on the third wow. time that almost come over the top of it and it's got hardly any net clearance, really flat shot. It's a, an obvious choice for Eager as the server where to go here. Impressive stuff from the world number one, Iga Sviantek, with an ace on serve. Leads 3 2, Sviantek first set. Three games to two. All right, Iga Sviantek's made some massive gains in the off season, and this, let's just have a little bit of a look at the reason why. The leg drive, the hip drive, so. Schwantek, her average is 1.94 metres per second. The AO average is 1.68. So once you get into this sort of jump position right here, look at the height, look at the power, look at the velocity she has incorporated. And that's all measurable now by the new updated Hawkeye skeletal analysis that they've been able to really dig deep and see what the body's doing. You can see there, the difference, the red, the Schwantek, 172 kilometers an hour, and just a tournament average, 160. So that's massive ball coming onto you much quicker with a lot more bounce here for Iga Schwantek. So Iga Schwantek just getting a lot more pop, a lot more bounce off the court, a lot more leg drive in season Killer. Yeah, and you're right, Josh. It, you could see Iga actually leaning towards that back end down the line, expecting it. And Linda Noskova is keeping it up her sleeve for yep. something special. Yeah, it's almost a case of you, you, you almost overuse it to keep a pin to the middle of the court, or you use it sparingly and wait for that big moment. So that's what it looks like. We know it's one of the best backhands down the line in the world. Thirty fifteen. Great depth on that return. And you really did a great job on analyzing oh. that technical aspect. I have to give you compliments oh. for that. Well done. Well, thank you. Thirty-two. 
Kuroki Fortuna. And again, just highlighting her athletic ability here. Have a look at the footwork, the movement from Iga Svantec. On defense, does a good job of not running directly to it. She gets her body behind the ball. Makes it look so easy. That's not an easy shot. Oh. You've got to love it. That's just brave yeah. from, a, from a youngster. Unhinged. I love it. There's no, no nerves, no panic. No nerves, no panic, no nonsense. <laughs> You can just see when you do give her a neutral ball and she sets up, does, it doesn't matter if forehand or backhand. It's just absolute brutality. So clean, so good. Oh. Advantage, Noskova. I like that serve, second serve, with a bit of extra pop on it into the forehand. Such an extreme grip she stands there to return with. Ball. That's a great point you bring up, Josh. I talked about it last year, actually. Iga was very stuck last year in her returning position. It was very good, but when she met somebody on a hot streak with, her serving, with their serving, she was just having trouble making ground. And this year, you could see her backing up on that second serve, just giving herself more time. And it pays off. Oh. Here again, she's giving herself a bit more time for that slice wide. It's a, it's a good, it's a good serve. Uh, but but, you know, if you're the server, you know that has to go cross court with such an extreme grip. You can't. She, it's near impossible for this to go down the line. I mean, of course she can, but generally this is going to go cross court. So you know where the ball's going to come back to. I just like the difference in where she starts in terms of width with her return position and where she ends up. They read each other on this one. Iga was in the right corner. And then Linda did such a good job in reading this one here. Beautiful. Advantage, Noskova. Sometimes. Sometimes, especially when uh -huh. she's so far, yes. you know, and she like, you know, she goes like she a goes football. like yeah. yeah. Is that the seagull's fault? It's it loud. It was quite loud. <laughs> I can hear it from up here in the comp box. It's that time of the Where's evening. Where's Rufus here. the hawk? Yeah, that's right at Wimbledon. They have Rufus who scares away the, the pigeons. Oh. 
I like this return. When the ball is tracking into the body, I like I that she moves it. to the right. That's, it. It's an easier return on, on a double hand as backhand than it is sometimes. I think particularly with her forehand grip, it sets it up nicely. She's just com complaining that she's still on the big screen. What, she doesn't like the look of herself or the, the fact that it's distracting, possibly? Yeah. It was quite distracting. I mean, you can, she can see a close-up of her racket as she's learning up to return. I feel like you yeah, can't miss it on the eye line, so yeah. tricky. Laura, how are things looking down there? I, I feel like Iga's maybe a little stressed. There's a few things that she's bringing up to the chair on fire. This isn't the first issue that's come up. But also, um, I know you asked her at the end of the last match about the knee, and I'm just noticing some bruising above that strap that she's got on where it's clearly been worked on by the physios. So a lot of uh, treatment over the last 48 hours, perhaps. Always seems to be a fair bit of angst or anxiety mm -hmm. going on with Shantek every time she plays, even when she, you know, she's in winning positions. I actually see a lot of similarities in terms of mindset with her big idol, Rafa Nadal. He also seems to be driven by that anxiety of losing. I remember him after the 10th time he won Roland Garros. He went out there playing a qualifier and he believed he was going to lose. But that drives them. That's what makes them so sharp and so intense on court. Iga is certainly Berlin. similar in that regard. You can see here, it doesn't matter whether it's 5-1, 4 all, she will always have the same intensity. She will be annoyed by herself when she misses a, a point or a ball. Let Fusser. That's why she wins so many six love sets, isn't it? Exactly. Ball. Game. That's a love service game. Great consolidation there from Igish Frontek. 5 2, first set. How many times have we seen this sort of set from Sviantec where you know someone's able to hang close for the first couple of games and then they're just not able to keep up with her intensity and you see how consistent Noskova has to be just to hold her own serve but a few too many double faults for me I feel like she can get away with going a little slower on th off the first serve if she keeps that percentage up because Iga is a little bit further back 
um, and, and just try and play her way into the rallies a bit more. I know she, she feels like she has to go all out, um, but as we said at the start of the match, sometimes your own game is enough. Mm. No, it's just that I think the, the constant pressure of taking time away from your opponent, Shrantek time. does it better than anyone. They say that's possibly the biggest bar in the country over Super Saturday here. They sell enormous amounts of drink and, of course, food and beverage. And we've had him here all week. The King of Poland has come out to watch the world number one. He's a, he's a fan. He's a supporter. He's come all the way out from Krakow. And he loves supporting Schwantek. Fifteen. This is an important game, isn't it? You're down five-two, and things are happening quickly. You just really want to take care of business and make sure you hold here, just to throw a bit of doubt back in your opponent's mind. Fifteen. Well, that was a very good second serve, and I think she almost expected it not to come back. Maybe at all, but definitely not in that way. There was 159 Ks an hour. That is very fast for a second serve. Yep. Pacey. Got Four good accuracy D15. when she lands it. That's just 154 kilometers, this one, but it's the accuracy. I like it. A nice bit of shape and slides away off the court. Game. And again, good stuff from the 19-year-old. Just going to ask the question here of Shvantec and Shvantec leads Petko. It's, it's always different, isn't it? He's trying to close out a set or a match. It just has that different feel about it, doesn't it? Yeah, and not a, always necessarily in a bad way. You're just like, okay, now I have to be extra focused. And already that thought of being extra focused can increase the tension. And I think the secret to playing a perfect tennis game for anybody, whether that's an amateur or a professional, is that balance between tension and relaxation. Too much relaxation is not good. Too much tension is definitely not good. And finding the perfect balance is the challenge. Well, ooh. change of direction with love 15. I wonder if that's maybe a way to move forward in the next you just try, try to change direction before Iga is able to do so it just feels like Iga has been doing that a bit more frequently than Linda Noskova maybe if she can dominate the change of direction it could turn the match around for her Maybe, I just thought if she was out there, she plays it with a lot off the left leg, if she could just be strong enough and pull that down the line. Not an easy shot, though. Oh. 
Laura, just feel this people. return stance on the second serve, just not having enough time, but a little too close to the baseline. How are you seeing it? I feel exactly the same. I'm wondering if in early second set, she makes some changes just to move half a step back, because even on the forehand now, it just feels like she needs to get more in play from the beginning, get herself into the rallies, and as Petko said, open up the line first. I feel like against Eager, you kind of want to be moving up and back all the time, not just sitting on the baseline, giving the, the ball space when you need to, and then immediately moving back inside as soon as there's an opportunity, because she does sometimes drop it short, and I feel like a lot of people aren't aware of that in the moment, and then by the time they get there, oh, it's already too late. Left for serve. Just yeah. a little long. And Igor Svantec, the world number Six one here on Super Saturday, has nabbed the first set. Six games to three. What can we expect here from Linda Noskova? Just oh. 19 years of age playing here on Rod Laver Arena. Fifteen. I don't know if I won the point, but gosh, she sometimes forget how quick Sean Tech is up to the ball. This one here, sliding on the knee that's uh, been bothering her. Ball. Again, just feeling pressure. It seems to me as she's as if she's almost barely using her wrists. She is accelerating with her arm. The arm is fine because the it is speedy that second serve, but she forgets the wrist sometimes. Ball. And it seems to mostly be landing long for her the second serve. playing back behind. What do you guys think about the elbow on the Oscar serve? I feel like it comes around quite low and then stays low as she's on the take back. Yeah, it gets a little right there. It gets tucked in a little bit. I'd like to see a fraction, a bit more space where it's a genuine throwing position. Wow. wow. Yeah, and if she just remains a bit too long in that 
trophy position doesn't get out quickly enough, then you can lose the timing on that when you have your elbow so low. Oh. Really needs to be quick out of the trophy position to pull that movement off. Advantage, no score. Well, you think about how big her first serve could potentially be if she just makes a couple of these tweaks. Game, Walk not good. hold that. Just to steady the flow of games here. First, first game, game, second Pico, set. Again, if you, I ask you this question all the time, but if you could put your coach's hat on, what would, <laughs> what would, what would your discussion with Linda Noskova be? So I would tell her on the returns to back off a little bit, the thing that Laura mentioned before. I think that will give her the opportunity to get into the rallies better on Iga Shiantek's serve. And then once she's in the rallies, I do think she needs to use that backhand line that she possesses. And she just, in general, needs to get out of the cross-court rallies before Iga does, because it has felt, the whole set it has felt like Shiantek has been dominating the rallies. And I think the reason for that is that she's been changing directions before Linda. All right. Stunning evening here, Melbourne. Saturday night, day seven here at the Australian Open. We have a packed house here on Rod Laver Arena. You can see to the right there, Margaret Court, also a full house. Plenty of fans in the stands. It's so hard, isn't it, to not play fast all the time against Iga because she, she's rushing you so much, so you want to do the same, but it, it's just almost impossible to beat her at that game. Unless you're Ostapenko. <laughs> to change down the line before her Thank opponent, you. Linda Noskova. Just the unforced error. And you could see beautifully how that backhand down the line, it doesn't draw the unforced error right away. You're playing the best player in the world. But it, it got her a bit of a shorter ball that she was able to set up for and swing through. A nice, very nicely contested rally here. I often think it's a, it's a 30, shame Ash, Ash Barty retired at a young age of 25. Just the contrasting battles they could have potentially had the, the slice and dice of Ash Barty. Mixed with power, of course. I would have loved to have seen those two play off in some big finals. Just the contrast in style. Oh. Sometimes cry in the bathroom thinking of that rivalry, of that potential <laughs> rivalry we've never had. What a loss for the tennis world. I don't think Ash Barty's crying in the bathroom. <laughs> I think she's loving life on the golf course, a young son. Yeah, good on her. Well deserved.
Fionta. Not sure the drop shot is One working game. for her. Laura, what do you think? It's panic button, isn't it? It's, I don't want to be in this rally anymore. Let me try something else, but it's not the play that's, even if, if it goes over, you think about how far Sviantec is moving forward and how good she slides into the short balls. It's a risky move. For a seat available for now, please. Ball. I know it's always hard to tell, but you know, when you're playing world number one here, Linda Noskova, what's her upside, or where where do you think she potentially gets to, ranking-wise, tournaments? What's the best surface? Her best chance? Well, you know what? I think that the hard team. court and grass will be her best surfaces. I really think on grass she could be super dangerous. And the good th news is that the things that she needs to improve, that she will improve, are all very easily improvable, in my opinion. It's the Four movement side team. to side. Yeah. That's the one thing. If you play the best players in the world and they play quickly left, right, you need to be in better position to be able to hang with them. And the drop shot we saw before Laura mentioned it, there was a cop out. She didn't want to be in the rally anymore because she could feel that she wasn't able to get there physically. Game, Noskova. Another good service game from Linda Noskova. We're on serve in the second set, 2-1. Two, two First two set, Schwantek. I am interested, though, can you improve someone's physicality or movement at, at, a, at the age of 19 or 20? Of course you can, but is that something that you are either born with or, you're, or you can improve as you, even as you age? That's a very good question. It's a very philosophical question, I would say, almost. Um, so for one thing for me, for example, just to use a personal example, that really helped me, I used to be okay quick not the quickest of all but okay um, and i did a lot of strengthening with squats with lunges a lot of weight work that helped me to become really get that first explosive step and technique wise once i incorporated the crossover from the corner which i didn't use to do yep. it just gave me an extra meter of ground that i covered and that is already Time. a big difference yep. good point Super Saturday here at the Australian Open, and it's great to have the world number one in the house. It's been a great day's play already. Carlos Alcaraz getting through in the day session. from the chat in the changeover about can you improve 15. your physicality? Y yes, because I wasn't very fast at all. Um, but when I felt like I'd put in a huge amount of work in the gym to be you know, half a step quicker, I feel like my anticipation improved with it because I wasn't looking, I, I wasn't almost looking behind me all the time. And I think it improves self-confidence and self-belief if you're moving what better you're, you're physically better it just gives you that bit more self-belief in the big moments and confidence here we have Iga's coach thomas Witkorowski, the man who never smiles as i like to call him 
very nice man off the court, though. She showed us. Laura, are you taking back the drop shot? 30, Not yet. That's that's one. Yeah, Thomas always cracks me up because you see him on the side of the court and you think he looks a little, little bit miserable. But then if he ever messages you, he adds like 10 emojis to every single message. <laughs> was the one yes that I, 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 I suspect she's been waiting to use this on a big point that was it just clips the top of the tape Let us Advantage, three on ten. with that intensity it doesn't give you an inch all Two match to all second set well and I was holding my breath here a little bit because that was exactly the service game in the previous match against Danielle Collins where things seemed to go wayward for Iga Shiantek. lost focus let Danielle Collins back into the match after having won the first set and thank you for there's a already a hot second it looked like she might lose focus again. Thank you. 
how quickly she Loving moves time. up to these short balls. It's just mesmerizing to watch. Yeah, it's beautiful footwork, isn't it? And this is the ball when she has a bit of time here, clips the tape. When it sits there, that's why she's so dominant on clay. She can take that oh. one down the line. When she doesn't have time, that will go cross court nine times out of ten. Fifteen. Another player who does that tremendously well on the men's side, but only on the forehand, forehand side, interestingly, Stefanos Tsitsipas. If you oh, yeah. ever get the chance to watch him, and just him, how he moves up to those short balls. This is not bad either. No. 30, 15. I do think you're right, though. Her game looks good for grass. Mm. I know it's not till the middle of the year on, at Wimbledon, but nice flat ball striker a lot of the time. Good depth. Yeah, beautiful. And she has those serves, the flat mm. ball kick the down wood. the middle on the on the deuce side and the out wide on the advantage side. It's a hard serve for women especially to hit because they are not as tall as men are, of course. Nice set up here. Advantage, and again, that angled ball really drawing the unforced error when Sviantec gets Noskova on the run, and by on the run, I mean more than four or five big steps. Seems to more often than not extract an unforced error. Yeah. Good accuracy again on serve, getting herself out of trouble here, Noskova. Yes. She's played a good second set to this point, but you just got to hang on and try and go as deep as you can. Keep holding that serve. It just builds pressure on your opponent. Advantage, Not easy to read this serve because you've got a very nice ball toss. It gets it in the same location. So as a returner, you, that's what you're probably looking for. Any slight deviations with the ball toss and You'll get to read their patterns. Yeah, just a few forehands yes. from the center of the court that she's missed in this game. Doesn't make enough space. And again, when you jam her or get her on the run, those are the two areas of her game that she can still improve. And then she will be a very, very dangerous player, especially on hard courts and grass courts. Already is a very dangerous yep. player. Yeah, I think it's fair uh, to say we both agree, and I'm sure Laura does as well. Just the, there's a lot of upside still for mm. for Linda in many ways. There's, you know, we we, we forget she's just 19 years of age. You know, this is her first Dude. Australian Open. Yeah, unbelievable. Just pulls away a little quick, I think, with that left arm, then mm. hence falls back and falls off the shot. Needs to get a bit more weight on that left foot. 
Advantage, no score. Yeah, that was a great slow motion there to really exemplify what went wrong in that specific shot. Two second set. Noskova leads three games to two. Well, and uh, Noskova not quite able to make strides on the service games of Iga Shiramtek. She only had she's only had two break points and wasn't able to convert either. And here we see a little bit why. This is the second serve return placement. The return placement after Iga Shiramtek's second serve, and you can see how central it is. And that's okay, I don't mind the central return, but how short it is. I think she either needs to find more depth on those returns or go more to the corners. But the combination of central and short just doesn't really put Iga Shiantek into danger after her second serve. Time. Very well said. Thank you. Uh, it's a full house here, and what a pretty spectacle it is. Sun setting here in Melbourne, out over Port Phillip Bay, behind the city there. Iga Svantec, the world number one, trying to get her hands on the Australian Open trophy. Best result is the semi-finalist a few years ago, but in great form here tonight. Let's pursue. Ball. Let second serve. Absolutely mesmerizing. 15. From the first three shots where she was in a defensive position to finding that angle right here from the forehand side. Just stunning. Just clips the tape that one. That shot from Noskova here, just giving Schwantek very little chance. been waiting for it all Indeed. evening and that must have looked pretty good courtside Laura stunning played it so well this was a tricky defensive slice and then she just held her ground didn't really move it at all out for the last backhand
let pursue. But you feel like that's a big area of Eager's game that could still be improved, the awareness of where to cover at the net. If she's going to start playing more aggressively off the serve and return, and then we know how aggressive she is once the, the rally starts, then you need to anticipate playing at first volley. Forty thirty. Yeah, have a good hold here. Three all, second set. Three games all. Fifteen. Oh. Well, and Josh, it's Love always her. nice to be right and be backed up by numbers. And we swear we haven't rigged those. And look at this. We've asked Noskova to change the, the down the line a bit more. And she is doing that in the second set. And even though she's down love 30, it did feel like a much closer set. Yeah, I agree. It's a, it's a much better set of tennis here from Noskova. The, the awareness for a young player to make change, almost self-coach themselves out there on court. I, I think that shows 13. good maturity. Yeah, just a good feeling for the game, right? Mm. She's feeling, I'm playing okay, I'm not playing badly, but somehow I just can't push through right now and adjust whether that it's by instinct or by a conscious decision. But really great awareness. Thirteen. 
And because I'm sitting down here next to Darren and it would almost be a crime not to steal his homework, um, he's just pulled up a graphic uh, on his channel that Noskova is hitting it bigger off the baseline than the match on MCA right now, Medvedev versus Felix Oje Aliasim. Keep stealing all of Darren's work. He doesn't points. know what he's talking about. <laughs> Hasn't coached anyone decent in his career. <laughs> um, don't worry, I'm taking notes down here. Great stuff here, though, from Igor Schwantek. Look at the shape here. Very yeah. safe. It's a. It may seem close to the line, but that's a very well measured shot. Iga's forehand from the center of the court is firing on a medium to quick court. I think that sends a message to the rest of the field to beware because Iga is there. There's a forehand heaviness, 7.67, the top 100, just 6.69. That's a massive difference. Ah. And I guess what is forehand uh, heaviness? It's, it's, a, it's a combination of power swing speed what it's doing off the court Holding serve, 4-3, second set. Noskova leads four games to three. And I just get the feeling watching Linda Noskova, I can't help but think, imagine Linda as a 12, 13, 14 year old, just great hands, just one of those really talented ball strikers that has great hand-eye coordination, knows where her racket head is at all times. A little bit like Martina Hingis back in the day, just very skillful. I thought you were going to say a little bit like Laura Rupps back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> she gave us the death stare from I'll down take there. it. <laughs> well, that Wimbledon Junior Championships, who will forget? Oh. They had to put it live on TV on the BBC. That was big time, baby. <laughs> I heard she broke the record from One Direction in terms <laughs> of audience viewership. You know it. Mm. Time. Sun setting that is back over Port Phillip Bay for sure. And the, the city far away, catch the tram down there. And before we know it, it's that time of the night. But still plenty more to play for before we hit the sack tonight. New balls in play, Iga Schwantek. Well, she played a great first set, and, has, and the match has been of highest of quality, but she just can't quite crack through in this second set. Ball. This is a great Lock shot. This is with the one that we're sort of wanting more of. Just have a look at the footwork and the space she gives herself. It's just perfect execution.
Love 13. Excellent defense early in the rally. And what a way Love to bring up three break points. And what a great save Iga pulled off after that return. That was an incredible return with great depth. But that forehand down the line, that's that extra bit of surprise, right? Normally, you, everyone else would defend cross court through the center of the court, try to get back in the rally but took a risk and it paid off mightily. Oh, okay. what a brilliance from Moskova. Clean winner. And the crowd loves it. They want more of this. It's been building, hasn't Moscow it? It Valley's feels like she's a bit three. more relaxed out here. Maybe the scoreboard pressure just leaving her shoulders slightly and uh, committing to the backhand line, as you guys reflected in the numbers. Fantastic game. Well, all of a sudden, Linda Noskova serving to level this match at one set all. First time Schwantek's lost serve all match. Smart. It's worked well to serve out wide on the first to the forehand. Wow. Third Just what Laura said, it seems like she's un locked another level of pace in her ground stroke which we're already at a very very high pace to begin with oh, come on 19 years of age this is a big moment in your career here on rod labor arena steps up and goes three bombs Four to bring minutes. up triple set point to do she needs to pick it up played it a bit too conservatively maybe from the middle of the second set also really hard to deal with these fast page paced shots that came at her in the past two games Oh. 
15 left. Yeah, it must seem like deja vu a little bit to Iga Shiantek. Had a similar thing happen to her against Danielle Collins, who just went on a red hot streak out of nowhere. And so did Linda Nosko in these last three games. Boy, was that level of play incredible. Thirteen. Up. And you analyzed it so beautifully in the beginning of the match, Josh. We see it here, 184 Ks an hour. You guys have been serving those numbers quite regularly in 2024, and she hasn't been doing that last year. Oh. <laughs> it's just so seamless, right? That's easy, isn't it? When you've got such great timing and look, look at this, strong, meets it out in front. Very still upon impact, the mm -hmm. head doesn't move. There's so many things to like about it. Oh. That's a good yeah, opening game it. from Iga Schwantek. She sends a message to her opponent that she will not First go game, away final. easily. It's funny because in the first set we were suggesting to Noskova to move back for the return, but the way that she's seeing the ball now, she's seeing it like a football. So yeah, that's the moment where you can cut the angle off and take everything inside the baseline when it's available to you. Uh, because once you feel that you're in the zone, you want to keep it going for as long as possible. Let's just take a look at wind predictor here. Eh? That can't be right. Oh. Yeah. No. That cannot be right. I think they messed, they mixed up the names. Yeah. Even if they messed up the names, that's pretty savage. <laughs> yeah, especially after that set Linda Noskova has played. Take that ball a little bit earlier and hold your hold your position on the baseline. Look what's possible. Not easy to do though. Here it looks like she just played a bit faster in this point right there. Yep, you see the difference. Noskova gets out of position, and that's where it exposes her movement out wide a little more. It was interesting before the last point, though, Sviantek a bit annoyed at herself because she's running to cover the forehand line mm. and then realizing, actually, most of the time, Nozkova going forehand cross and then backhand line. Ah. 
Or did telling herself to just hold her ground a bit more. Let us I wonder whether now is the time for Iga to take half a step back on that first serve that's been landing in so well. 75% winning percentage on that first serve just to give herself a bit time to get in the rally, make the young teenager play. to go for it on the biggest of stages. One all. Let's just take a look at the, the real win predictor. That was just a little bit of a glitch, I suspect. And there you see it. Pre-match, it was 88%. Now it's back to 77. So good respect, win predictor, showing Linda Noskova here in this one. Still a bit savage for me. Given how... Given how well Noska yeah. is playing. She's just ripped an inside in forehand winner. Well, that's the problem with AI. They don't see what <laughs> we see. They just see the numbers. And the numbers sometimes don't tell the story in between the lines. Law 15. Opportunity here at Love 30. Fifteen forty. There's trouble. Couple of break points. Against the one. 
got an upset on the cards brewing here, Petco. Uh, the last few games, Linda Noskova has looked absolutely impenetrable. So solid, so unfazed, compact in her ground strokes. And yet, the result has been absolutely stunning because, as Laura pointed out, with a stat that she stole from her neighbor, Darren Cahill, sending kind regards, Linda Noskova has been hitting the ball, ball harder than Medvedev and Oji Eliasim on Margaret Court. That's where we are here on Rod Laver Arena. And I think that's the scary part, that it doesn't look like she's straining to generate that pace. It looks like she's just comfortable and hitting. She is. Uh, so much freedom. And uh, we must check in with Laura because she's broken too early in the set. Remember oh, Laura Robson right, courtside? the Laura Robson theory. Just, just thinks you, you shouldn't break too early in the set. Just a little bit of help required here for one of the fans in the stands. Yep, I can see it. Ladies They're and gentlemen, we're dealing with it pretty quickly. Thank Paramedics you. are right on the case, so hopefully, nothing too serious. I feel like I want to take back my theory. Well, you can't do that. You well, I know. I, I, deep down, I want to stick to it because I still believe it, but it feels like no one else agrees with me. <laughs> you can't take a theory back that's been named after you. Mm. So it looks like the underway shortly here. just think what is there to talk about here I, I feel like the last two games in particular it's really unbelievable play off Moscow's racket rather than anything that Iga's done really wrong but sometimes you just have to wait it out and hopefully wait for your opponent's level to drop slightly yeah because the two missed forehands to go down left 30, those were off crushing returns from the other side, so. Good news, all is okay with the patron, just a thing well looked after here. And we're gonna be underway here. Well, and that is the way to go, right? If you can't make any ground, you have to strike first. Yep, that's that. Get on the front foot, get a little more aggressive mentality that you both are oh. looking for from the world number one. That is very, very good. Chapeau, Iga Shiantek. Love 30. Picking it, it up nicely here. Hitting through the court, swinging freely. Hasn't she used the break well? Hundred forty five Ks an hour was the speed of this last return. Ball. Good 
15 14. Gets the break straight back. That's a great game. A lot more aggression in the Shvantec return. Two games of unbelievable response. I, I'm wondering now, you know, when at Petco you would have felt this, when you feel like you're hitting it big and then it takes someone on the side of the court to say, actually, no, you're not. You need to go for more. Mm. And that's instantly what she was doing there. Just this, you know. But that mistake shows you. I don't think that mistake happens if Iga doesn't hit as decisively yep. in the previous ground stroke. And that is the difference. And that's exactly what Laura just mentioned. Sometimes you need somebody to just be like, no, you can hit decisively with security. Thirty fifteen. you want to hit a big but to execute it it's not that simple and secondly i think moscow doesn't mind pace so if you do not get it right in those locations she can burn you in tennis how hard can I hit the ball without losing security yeah. without hitting too many unforced errors without giving too many gifts to the opponent that trigger down the line from a defensive position and what a time to be alive for us <laughs> look at this completely off the court break point down yeah, it takes a lot of self-belief doesn't it a lot of hours of practice Let's pursue. Oh. 
Let Fusser. Such a big difference, isn't it, when Shvantec gets that first serve in. 185 kilometer an hour first serve. It just sets it up to let her game just flow beautifully. Stuff here from the world number one. Gets back in front. 3 2. Final set. Three games to two. Well, it's a good response. A champion's response, as you would expect. Third round action here. A nice job in sticking with it, right? She picked up the pace, made a few unforced errors, but realized that was the way to go against a streaking Linda Noskova, hitting the ball so cleanly, seeing it as big as a football, as Laura Robson said. Just backing herself. Let up. Let go, just get the feeling in going to come down to who can serve best for the remainder of this set and by that I mean first serve first serve such oh. a key if you can get around 65 to 70 percent of first serves in with how well both of these guys serve I think that will be the deciding factor well and especially Third because 15. this third set has kind of crystallized into who can strike first, who can be the first one to step on that gas pedal, put the other one under pressure. And of course, the first serve is a first strike by nature. Uh, that was way too over-explained. First serve <laughs> is a first serve. <laughs> I know what you mean. There we go. I mean, these girls, with, with how well they, they serve, it almost gives them one to two free points every service game. That's how well they serve. 62% for Noskova. Shvantec, 67%. Four teaker. Look how low she gets. That's mm. great footage of just how low players get. Okay, not going. That serve to the forehand is working a treat for Linda Noskova. Three games. And I still go on record thinking that Iga Shiante could take half a step back on that first serve. It is a very big serve. Yep. And she likes to hit through it. Yes, she can hit that slice, but she likes to hit. I think she prefers to hit through the court. And that half a step will give you a bit more time and space to react to it. Get it in through the center of the court with good depth. 
and hope it. for the best. That's yeah. what I used to do. <laughs> That's the first thing, isn't it? The first rule, get that first serve back in play, then look to strike. Ball. I tell you what, that second serve was back of the line and it felt like Iga maybe thought it was long because she didn't move out to the next plus one shot as quick as she normally does. Just desperately needs a first serve now. What's happened to the body service the first serve? If you're trying to keep the first serve percentage high, that is that's the go-to. Trap Noskova up on the backhand side, get it kicking up into her body. Ball. There to be had. Third view. Ah, that was the first time I felt like she hesitated just a bit. This is the smallest amount. No, oh, I agree. Just she knows it as well. Oh. Two in a row. It was in the air, right? There is just that bit of hesitation. It just comes to show you how small the margins are between teeing off on everything and just missing those two backhands. They were still good shots. She still has very nice technique, but that tad bit of hesitation makes all the difference in the world. Oh.
on the first serve at the moment here, yeah. Shvantec. I 100% believe that the first serve there needed to go kick to the back end again, mm -hmm. make her play a third one in a row. Time violation warning, Miss Shrimpik. <laughs> this is to me just mind blowing the audacity. To go down the line on that on that one and pull it off, just take me out of here. Well, again, this this shot is the hardest shot to hit. Changing direction of any ball that comes at you cross court. Is just hanging in there. Fearless. This is such a good contest. Gets it. What a game from Linda Noskova. Well Moves ahead 4-3 with a break. Final set. Noskova leads four games to three. All righty. Here we are. Hawkeye. Taking a look at Noskova, first serve placement on the first court, you will see hitting that serve out wide. That's just working a treat tonight into the Svantec forehand. And I just think you just got to keep doing that, keep going. Very little serves into the body, which I find interesting. I think that's something that Linda can eventually get to a little better. And that's really interesting. I, I think that first serve, particularly on the juice court, 87% of first serves into that side hit doing so much damage tonight Time. and she's only got a hold serve twice can she get there high in the sky here looking down onto one of the most famous courts in world tennis rod laver arena where we have an upset brewing Linda Noskova, 4-3 up, final set, with a break. And I Thank don't you. need to speak Polish to know that Iga just looks like she's complaining about the first serve to her coach, Thomas, off to the side before this game starts. On the 
half drop shot, half slice. But great hands from Noskova. So good. Awesome recovery. Thirty fifteen. Well, took a little pace off, just 150. It was a slider into the body and probably got the ball she was looking for. So good. That is unreal from Linda Noskova. What self belief. It's a ripper of a play, but Iga's got to find a way to slow this down now, to actually help Noskova out with the nerves. You've got to force her to play an extra shot. If it's coming into her racket all the time, she's not going to feel it. May yeah, every yeah. single first serve, Linda Noskova. Ice cool. High school and just keep in mind in the first set Linda Noskova kept five games going back cross court with that backhand and she's changed her game plan up since that second set she's turned this match around and this game alone three backhands down the line to go up 5-3 in the third set can the world number one come back from this Josh what do you think it's a big ask the, the way it this will be a free swing here for Linda Noskova. She will continue to go for it. Fifteen low. Iga needs to find that first serve that she's been complaining about. Maybe keep her head just a tad bit higher. The chin, she sometimes tends to pull the chin down. And if you do that at home, you will see how the tension in your abdominals leaves you right away. Ball. It's a champion's response, isn't it? Chiantek holds comfortably. Linda Noskova a chance to serve for the match. Is she going to do it? Well, Laura, you are the closest of all of us. You what? have to tell us. I feel like... For Linda, yes, I think she believes she can, but Iga could make this awfully difficult for her if, if she forces herself to make every return in play, move further back, like we've been saying, and just 
hustle it out for a couple of points and, until maybe Lindit starts to feel a little nervous because this is a huge win should she get over the line here. Monumental upset brewing here. Virginia Rizucci from Romania is the only top seed to lose before the fourth round. That was back in 1979. Ah. She actually lost first round, so this is a huge upset brewing. Mm. Melbourne at its absolute finest. Another epic here on Rod Laver Arena. Doesn't get any better where we're seeing a teenager, 19-year-old, in the Noskova, trying to dethrone the world number one. Great defense, though, from Moskova. That's the one, Laura. Oh. <laughs> you are joking. She's got the line, the back of the line, twice in these two points. And so did Noskova. What a brave second serve. So deep. Wow. Oh. Help. That's a freebie. Just needs to settle here. Noskova find that first serve again. This is the side I would take a half a step back if I was Iga Shiantek. We know Noskova loves the slice out wide on the do side, but here she goes for big. win of her career and the world number one is out
Fantec, wow. Played well, I thought. Didn't really do too much wrong tonight. Just a tough, tough job for Iga Shiantek, this Australian Open 2024. Not only the... But just a tough job in terms of matchups, right? The cannon, of oh, yeah. course, that's already tough. But then Collins, who has beaten her before on this court, and then somebody, and we mentioned it at the top of the match, right? Moskova has the game to trouble her. No disappointment for our top seed. Let's hear from Laura Robson, courtside with Linda Moskova. Linda, congratulations. This is your first time in the main draw of the Australian Open and you've just beaten the world number one. How does that feel? Um, I mean, I'm speechless, obviously. I knew it's gonna be uh, an, an amazing match with world number one and such a player, but I didn't really uh, think that it would end up like this, but um, I'm just really, I'm just really glad to get through this round. Yeah, you can, you can be very happy after that one. <laughs> and I want to talk about how you felt at 5-4 there, trying to serve out the match. How were the nerves? Were you shaking a little bit? It seemed like you were overcome with emotion after the handshake, but what was it like on the first point? Um, I was a little shaking, um, obviously I didn't hit uh, two first serves, which was not uh, the best start for me, but um, I pulled out an ace and... Uh, uh, easy when you do that. Yeah, well, it's easier like that, but uh, it's tough sometimes to bring it such a score. Yeah, it seemed like you were so tactically aware of what was happening tonight. We noticed through the match that you started to go more with your backhand line. Was that all you or were you getting some help from your coach? You can take all the credit if you like. You don't have to say that it was him. No, it was uh, teamwork. Team makes dream, <laughs> makes dream work, right? Um, no, but they helped me a lot. They, um, they were supporting me and I'm just really glad that I can have this for all of us. And you definitely had so much support in the crowd tonight. As the match went on, I feel like I heard some let's go Aussie Linders. Are you happy with that? Are you ready to take on that role? I'm ready, like say, just say so. So thank you guys so much for the support. It was amazing to play here for the first time. Give up for Linda Noskova through to the second week of the Australian Open. Thank you guys, thanks so much. Almost disbelief from the teenager. Wow, what a performance. That was an incredible performance. And I thought she was already playing quite well in the first set. Yeah. But then she was... I, I, I don't have words for we, this. We've got to call a few more matches together. Every match we call, that is so the true. tennis has been just fantastic. And what a future. Just 19 years of age, she has certainly arrived, and there's no doubt we will see a lot more from Linda Noskova in the, the immediate future. I just so impressed with under pressure to have to get out and serve that that last service game. Those things are so hard to do. But she did it comfortably with so much self-belief. Yeah, and the most impressive thing to me for a 19-year-old to make that adjustment to game plan. She credited her team, but still, you need to be able to execute. You need to be able to yep. have the courage to implement yep. that against the world number one. And here we have it, the stats that speak I the narrative. Think, of I think the, the big match. difference there the first serve, yes, at 63%, but Linda Noska was only in the mid-50s, and the second serve points one was 
below 30. Under so 30, I think yeah. the serve in the second and third set for me, Petko, made a big difference. And how many times do you think Iga Shiontek lost a match where she was plus one? She yeah. hit, she's hit more a wins. winner more than unforced yeah. errors. Yeah, you wouldn't lose too many matches when you're in the in the positive there. So what a performance from Linda Noskova, knocking out the world number one. Two hours and 20 minutes of sheer brilliance. Cute, isn't it? It's never <laughs> got to sign the lens. Never been out here on Centre Court. It's the first Australian Open. Is she writing Time Flies? I would feel very upset if a 19 year old tried to <laughs> write Time Flies there. First time. First time. Yay! Well done. It's different, right? The motto of the Australian Open. Yeah. First time feels different. What a bright spark as well to have the clarity to write that. All right. Hello, hello.